Hey everyone, welcome to another lesson in Math 2. This lesson is going to be basically putting everything that we have together um, and about quadratics and quadratic functions. Um, remember the different forms, if I could spell different, right? Apparently uh, I can't spell different. Um, you can see that in the title there, but converting between different forms of quadratics. So we know that we have vertex form, we have standard form, we have factored form. And we kind of know how to play around with them. So today is more of just a review of, of some of those things and, and how that's all related. So with that said, your objective today is to be able to convert any quadratic function to any other form. So if I give it to you in vertex form, you should be able to convert it to standard form and to factored form. If I gave it to you in standard form, you should be able to convert it to vertex and factored form. And then if I give you in factored form, you should convert it to standard form and vertex form. So any, any form you should be able to convert to other forms, okay? So taking a quick review of the three forms, vertex, standard, and factored form, um, what do we see? What are they? Well, first of all, remember vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where, where the h and the k represent the vertex. And the A is whether we open up or open down, and then also the slope pattern. The standard form, Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. Remember the A is, is your slope pattern, whether it opens up or down. And the C is the Y value of your Y-intercept. And then in factored form, you have, you have something that looks like this. I didn't want to put a bunch of letters in here, but basically you have your GCF. Whatever your GCF was out of all three terms, you take that out, factor that out first. And then you factor the remaining trinomial, so you have factor one and factor two. Well, now, why are all three of these forms important? Why do we need to know all three forms? Can't we just use one form and then graph it? Well, yeah, you could graph basically out of any form, but just like I said before, there are certain things that each form indicates uh, about the graph, okay? So those are the names, vertex standard factors. Those are the different forms, the different equations. And then what does this show? What, what are the things that each piece or each form shows? Obviously in vertex form, like I said, the vertex form shows you your factors. Uh, it, or sorry, vertex form shows you your vertex. And it also shows whether the function or the graph opens up or opens down. That's based on the A value. And it also shows the slope pattern. So whatever the A value is, remember we multiply the A value by 1 over 1, uh, 4 over 2, 9 over 3, and so on. It gives you your, your slope pattern. Uh, in standard form, we see the y-intercept. Like I said, the c-value is the y-value of the y-intercept. And it also tells us whether we open up or open down. And it tells us the slope pattern. So that basically gives me everything the same except for the vertex and the y-intercept there. Um, and then the last form, the factored form, it tells me my x-intercepts. And we're going to talk more about that later on, that the factored form tells us our x-intercepts. And it also tells me whether it opens up or opens down. So depending on the value out front, the GCF out front, we'll know whether the function opens up or opens down. Notice it doesn't tell us our slope pattern. Uh, in some rare cases, it will also give us our slope pattern. But if the factors are um, where the x has a coefficient other than 1 in each of the factors, then it can't give us the slope pattern. So those are the things uh, that we're going to talk about. And, and all the things that it gives. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of converting, converting to different forms. In the first case, we are given y equals 3 times x minus 6 squared minus 17. And so this is, this is a vertex form, and we are trying to convert it to standard form. Okay, that's our goal. Well, remember, standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And so we need to basically get it so that all the parentheses are gone. So the first thing we have to do is we have to expand. So the x minus 6 squared, that's going to be x minus 6 times x minus 6. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply all this out. Remember, x minus 6 times x minus 6, well, we rewrite that as x times x minus 6 and then the minus 6 times x minus 6. And then from there, we'll distribute. So we get x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 36. So we're just distributing into each of those parentheses there. Then we'll combine like terms. So we end up with x squared minus 12x plus 36. 
And remember, we still have to carry down the three and the negative 17 out front. So um, what I like doing is saying, okay, all of this has got to be multiplied by three still. And then we have to subtract the 17. So I'm going to carry that down here, three parentheses, x squared minus 12x plus 36, and then minus 17. So that is y. Okay. And then from there, we need to distribute the three and then combine like terms. And once we do that, we'll have our standard form. So when I multiply by 3, I get y equals, that makes room here, my marker is also dying here, 3x squared minus 36x, and then 36 times 3, well that's 90, that's 108, and then minus 17. And then we'll combine like terms, the 108 and the negative 17, so you end up with 3x squared minus 36x, and then Let's see, that'll be 91, 91, I believe. What, 91, 108, I believe that's correct. And that is our standard form of our quadratic, okay? So remember, first step, expand, then multiply the two binomials, and then distribute and combine like terms, and we have your answer, okay? For the second one, for the second one, that's written in factored form, and we want to convert that to standard form, okay? So both of these we're converting to standard form. We have y equals negative 2 times x plus 4 and then times x minus 3. These, this is very similar to the previous example, um, but it's already written out, expanded out, so all we have to do is multiply. So we're going to go ahead and write down x times x minus 3 and then plus 4 times x minus 3. We'll distribute that, so we got x squared uh, minus 3x, and then plus 4x minus 12. And then we can combine like terms, we got x squared plus 1x minus 12, that's fine. But we still have that negative 2 out front, so we need to carry that down. So we're going to put down negative 2 and put parentheses around it. And basically all of this needs to be multiplied by negative 2 still. Okay, so just don't, don't forget to carry that down. Then we'll go ahead and distribute, so we end up with y equals, I don't know why I put that, y equals negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 24. And so that is our standard form from factored form. So really, both of these problems, uh, A and B, are actually review problems from stuff we've done in the past. This one is actually from unit one when we're multiplying binomials and things like that. And then this one, the first one here, uh, was dealing with vertex form, and that was in unit two, okay? So those are actually both review problems. Um, and everything that we're doing today is actually a review of things that you know. We're just, we're just kind of uh, formalizing it all and putting it all together, okay? So here's a few practice problems that I would like you to do on your own. And once you are done, go ahead and compare your work to mine. So pause the video, see where you can get, and then come back and watch and see if you are correct. Actually, before we do that, it looks like I have a bit of a typo here. This should say, this should say squared. So let's go ahead and look at that. All right, so hopefully you've done this problem. Uh, number one, we have y equals negative parentheses x plus 5 squared plus 11. And so we need to expand this first. So we're going to say y equals, and then expand the x plus 5 uh, times x plus 5. And we'll carry down the negative and the plus 11 afterwards. We're going to rewrite this. So it'll say x times x plus 5 plus 5 times x plus 5. And we're going to distribute. So we end up with x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25. And then we'll combine like terms, so x squared plus 10x plus 25. And then we have to carry down our negative, so we had to multiply all this by negative, and we had to add at the end the plus 11. Okay, so we're going to do that here. We're going to put the negative out front and the plus 11 in the back, and that's equal to y. And then we'll distribute the negative, so we end up with y equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 25, and then plus 11. And then we can combine like terms there. So y equals negative x squared minus 10x, and then minus 14. All right, so that 
is our standard form for number one. Okay. For number two, number two, we have y equals four times x minus seven times two x plus one. Again, uh, this is in factored form. We're trying to get to standard form. So we're going to expand this. So it'll say x times two x plus one minus seven times two x plus one. And then we'll distribute. So we get two x squared plus one x. We could, we could put one x or we could just put x either way. And then the minus 14x minus 7. Combine our, our like terms. So we got 2x squared minus 13x minus 7. And then we still have that 4 out front there that we have to multiply by. So we're going to carry that down. And then we'll distribute again. So we end up with y equals uh, 8x squared minus 52x minus 28. And that is our standard form from factored form. So hopefully you did that correct on your own. But now let's get into uh, an, another way or another look at these things. So now I want to be able to convert from vertex form to factored form. From vertex form, sorry, it says convert the following to vertex form and factored form. So here I'm given standard form and I'm asking you to convert it both ways. Now we've had plenty of practice with converting from standard form to vertex form, but let's go ahead and do this. We got y equals negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 16. And we want to convert that uh, standard form, standard form to vertex form. We'll do that first. So remember to find the vertex form, we have to find our axis of symmetry first. The way we do that is we plug into x equals negative b over 2a. And so we can see negative parentheses. Our b value is negative 4, so negative negative 4, over 2 times our a value, so 2 times negative 2. Simplifying that, negative negative 4 is positive 4. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and that becomes negative 1. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. From there, to find the vertex, we need to take that and plug it back in. So we end up with y equals negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 16. And then we'll simplify it. Remember, do the exponents first. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. I'm going to carry everything else down first. And so negative 1 squared is positive 1. Then I'll do my multiplication. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 and then plus 16, and then combine like terms, so you get y equals 18 for the y value. So that means our vertex, our vertex is going to be negative 1, comma, 18. And then from there, we're going to plug into our vertex form. Remember, our vertex form is y equals a, and since I know the a value from my original problem is negative 2, so it'll be y equals negative 2, and then parentheses x, and then we change that sign, so x plus 1 squared, and then plus 18. So that is my vertex form. That's my vertex form um, from standard form. Well, the second part of this was to convert the standard form to factored form. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So basically, all I need to do is factor. That's, uh, that's the key here. So we want to go from standard form to factored form. All right, so the first thing I look for whenever I'm factoring is a GCF. Now notice in all three of these terms, well, they don't all have an X, but they do have a coefficient that, that I can take out. If I go through the factors and I say, okay, well, I know that they are all divisible by two, so that's a factor. The, I can't factor anything greater than two out of this, so I know that the GCF is gonna be a two. The other thing that you want to be careful of, make, make sure you're very careful of this. If the a value is negative, you always want to factor out a negative. Even if it's a negative one, you always at least want to factor out a negative. Um, so when I go to factor the GCF, I notice that the greatest common factor here is two. And because the a value is negative, I'm going to go ahead and take that out as well. So I'm going to factor out a negative two. Well, what's left over? Well, let's, let's find out. Negative two times what gives us negative 2x squared? Well, that would be x squared. And re remember, basically all we're doing here is reverse distribution. 
we're dividing in a sense. So negative two times x squared is negative two x squared. Negative two times what gives us negative four x? Well, a negative times a positive would give me a negative, and I have to, have to multiply that by two. Negative two times two is negative four, and then the x. And then because that's a 16 there, a positive 16, that means this has to be a negative because a negative times a negative is a positive, and that would have to be eight, okay? So that is the first thing you do in factored form. We found our GCF. Now we wanna go through and factor this trinomial here. And so we're gonna go through our motions, our A times C on top and our B on the bottom and all that. So A is one, C is negative eight, so negative eight's gonna go on top. B is two, so we're gonna look for something that multiplies to eight, so it'd be one times eight, two times four, and that's all of it. And we're looking for what multiplies to negative eight and adds to two. So we can see that two and four work. Now we work on the signs. Because we multiply and get a negative, that means one is positive, one is negative. And because when I add them up, it's gonna be positive two, that tells me that the bigger number must be positive. So negative two and positive four. So we're gonna go ahead now back to our original problem and expand that. So that'll say x squared minus two x plus four x minus eight. Then we'll group. So the GCF out of the first two, the x squared minus two x is gonna be x. What's left over is x minus two. The GCF in the second one is gonna be four. So we'd say four here. Now we know that the, the term inside the parentheses has to match, so we're gonna put an x there. And then I ask ourselves, what kind of sign do we need? Well, if this is a positive four and this is a positive x, when I multiply them, I get positive four x. So it should be positive. If that was a negative four x and that's x there, that would mean that this has to be negative. And so over here, positive four times what gives us negative eight? That would be negative two. And then we should always check our distribution to make sure it makes sense, and it does. So when I go to factor, I got x plus four, and then times x minus two. And then remember, we still have that negative two out front that we have to carry down, so we'd put the negative two there. So this is our final factored form from standard form. So how do I go from standard form to factored form? I first take the GCF out. If the A value is negative, I take a negative with it, and I make sure that I, I figure out what's appropriately left over, and I check distribution to make sure I, I have something equivalent to the original. Then I go through the factoring the trinomial uh, by grouping, and then uh, make sure you carry down the GCF there. So that's an example of uh, fa uh, standard form to factored form. All right, with that said, so... I guess I'm uh, showing a little bit of work here. Let's, let's make sure I'm right. That first one is correct. And that last one is also correct. So that's an example. And remember, any example should be in your notes on the right-hand side. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some practice problems that I'd like you to do. Go ahead and pause the video and uh, do them and then come back and see how you did. All right. For number three, we got y equals 2x squared plus seven x minus nine. And we wanna convert this to factored form, to factored form. Remember, we need to look for a GCF. Well, two, seven, and nine, there is no GCF. The, the greatest common factor would be one. And because the A value is not negative, I don't have to worry about that. So there is no GCF that I need to take out. If you need to, you can take out a one, but it doesn't change anything. So now I'm gonna jump into my x. Remember, the thing on top is a times c, so that'll say negative 18, 2 times negative 9. And then c, or sorry, b on the bottom, that's 7. Go ahead and list my factors of 18. That's 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. Out of those, 2 and 9 will add up to 7. Now, signs, I need a positive, sorry, 2 and 9. I need a positive 7, so that's going to be positive 9 and negative 2. And then from there, we'll expand. So it'll say y equals 2x squared minus 2x plus 9x minus 9. Then we'll do our grouping. So the GCF in the first case, that's a square there, is going to be 2x. And then left over would be x minus 1. The GCF in the second case, well, is going to be a 9. And I know inside I need an x. So I'll put the x there and then ask ourselves about the sign. Would this have to be positive or negative? Well, it would have to be positive because a positive times a positive is a positive. 
And because I have a negative nine here, what do I have to multiply positive nine by? I need to multiply it by negative one. And then from here, we'll take our outsides and put them in one parenthesis. And we'll take our ins insides because they match and put them in the other parenthesis. And then because there was no GCF, I have nothing to carry down. If you wanted to put a one out here, that'd be fine, but you don't need to do that. So this is the factored form uh, for number three. For number four, we have another example of standard form to factored form. We have negative x squared minus seven x plus 44. Well, do we have a GCF in this case? At first you might say, no, we don't have a GCF because uh, negative one, negative seven and 44, and that's true. Um, but because, remember I said, because the A value is a negative value, you wanna take the negative out at least. So we'll factor out a negative one and then figure out what's left over. Well, what would be left over is basically just changing all the signs. So we end up with negative one times X squared plus seven X minus 44. And then we'll do our X now based on what's left over. Top is A times C, so one times negative 44 is negative 44. Then the bottom is B. Then we're gonna go ahead and factor the 44. That's one times 44, two times 22. Uh, three doesn't work, four times 11. Five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight doesn't work, nine doesn't work, 10 doesn't work, 11 works, but I now I'm repeating. So from here, which one of these will give me a seven? Well, the four and the 11 give me a seven. So I know that those are the numbers there. Because seven is positive, I need 11 to be positive. And then the four would have to be negative. Then we'll go ahead and expand. So it'll say x squared minus four x plus 11 x minus 44. We'll do our grouping now. So the GCF out of x squared minus four x is just x. Left over is x minus four. The GCF out of 11 x and negative 44 is gonna be 11. And then remember inside we want an X. So because that's positive, we're gonna put a plus out front because positive 11 times X is positive 11 X. And then positive 11 times negative four is negative 44. And uh, from here we'd say X plus 11 times X minus four. Remember we took out a negative one out front. So we're gonna carry that down, negative one there and put the Y out front. And that is our factored form for number four. Okay. All right, for number five, number five is a, is a bit of a doozy because you'll notice number five is in vertex form. So for number five, we have Y equals five times X minus two squared minus five. And we wanna convert that to factored form. Well, we can't convert it straight to factored form. What we'd actually have to do first is convert it to standard form and then take that and convert it to factored form. So let's go ahead and convert it to standard form first. We're gonna go ahead and expand. Okay, then we're gonna rewrite the x minus two times x minus two is x times x minus two, minus two times x minus two, and distribute, so x squared minus two x minus two x plus four, and combine like terms, so x squared minus four x plus four. Remember to carry down the five from out front, and then in this case, the negative five out back. So I'll just go ahead and write that down here, five and negative five. And then we'll distribute again. So we get five X squared minus 20 X plus 20 minus five, and then combine like terms. So we end up with five X squared minus 20 X plus 15. And so that is our standard form, right? That's our standard form. From here, we wanna convert it to uh, factored form. So to go to factored form, we look for a GCF first. Out of all three terms, the GCF is five. And notice that the A value is not negative, so I don't need to take a negative out. So we're gonna figure out what's left over. If I divide uh, everything by five, this would have to be X squared minus four X plus three. And then we'll do our factoring of the trinomial. So A times C is three, and the, on the bottom is negative four. Three only has one set of factors, that's one times three, and I'm running out of room here. Uh, only works for one times three. So I know that those numbers are the right ones. Because they multiply to a positive three, that means the signs are the same. And because they have to add up to a negative four, that means they both have to be negative. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and expand that. That'll say x squared minus 1x minus 3x plus 3. Now we go ahead and group. The GCF uh, of x squared and negative 1x is going to be x. And then left over here is going to be x minus 1. Here's where, um, here's where I get some students that might get confused. Maybe you didn't put the negative 1 out front. Maybe you just put x squared minus x. That would be okay. But then when students look for a GCF here, they say, okay, the GCF is X and leftovers, that'd be X minus zero. Some students might say, well, remember, we're not subtracting or adding. We are dividing here. So when I say negative X divided by X, that doesn't give me zero. That gives me one. Another way to look at this is to say X squared minus X. Well, let's go ahead and divide both of those by X and see what you get. X squared divided by X is X and then negative x divided by x is negative one, okay? So going back over here, uh, looking for the GCF on the three x plus three, we can see that the GCF is in fact three. But remember, we want an x in the first term here because it needs to match over here. But if I multiply a positive three times a positive x, I end up with a positive three x. I need a negative three x. So I could either put a negative in the x, which I don't wanna do because this isn't, doesn't have a negative x, or I could put the negative out front. Negative three times X is negative three X. And then what would I have to multiply the negative three by to get the positive three? I'd have to multiply that by negative one. And that makes sense because now what's in the parentheses match. And so our factors are X minus three times X minus one. And remember, we took the five out originally, so we need to carry that down. And so this is my factored form. So this was a big one. Remember, we started we started from vertex form, and to get it all the way down to factored form, we had to first write it in standard form right here, and then convert the standard form to the factored form down there, okay? So with that said, uh, those are your practice problems for converting between different forms of quadratic functions. Um, again, most of this is just a review of things that we've done in the past, is just kind of formalizing it all, putting it all together. So with that said, make sure your notes are good. Make sure you have a, a title, an essential question, a summary, and a name at the top of your paper. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'll see you next time.